no problem. So today we're going to speak about some reactions of some of the reactions of amines. The first one is going to be the Hoffman elimination. Now the Hoffman elimination, it is analogous, but it's not the same as the elimination of water. So if you have water, okay, you have, you have an alcohol, we know that you can prepare the alkene. Now, if you look at the delta G for that reaction, that reaction is only slightly Gibbs free energy possible. It's only slightly spontaneous. So it's something that you would need to note. It's something that you should, in theory, know by now. Again, if you don't, not a big deal, okay? If you don't, it's not a big deal. But those reactions, I would assume that any third year student should know. Now, what happens there is the OH group is not a good leaving group. So what you do to make it a better leaving group, okay? What you do to make it a better leaving group is to first, is to first add a NH plus sign, okay? To make OH2 plus, OH2 plus is then a very good leaving group because it will release H2O. And then you have your product. Same thing would happen, can happen in the biomolecular elimination of quaternary ammonium ions. And this is important quaternary. Okay, so here we are dealing with quaternary salts. Okay, and you would be able if you have a good enough base to, to release an amine and produce an alkene. So, so the leaving group would have to be uh, a very good one, the one in green. The leaving group will only, always be a quaternary ammonium salt. So the, the charge there is going to be very, very important. Okay. Okay, the charge, having that charge, is gonna be very important because when you give it the electrons, okay, when you give it the electrons, then you're gonna produce a, co a stable compound, non-charged compound, okay, which is always very important. Okay, so which no is always, so no sorry? So no, so no other leaving group can do it have to be a quaternary ammonium. Pretty much. Same with water. Water norm normally first, you will protonate, okay? Why? Because OH minus is not a good leaving group, leaving group, but H2O would be, okay? That's why even, look, look here, look at this reaction. You first protonate, okay? Because once you protonate, what happens? Once you put an you end up in a situation where you can literally have what? You can literally have water leaving and it will want to leave. Even a strong, a weak base then, it would want to do it. And this is the important aspect here. It will want to do it, okay? It will want to do it. Tipo, it's not because you have to force it or anything. It itself will want to do that reaction. And therefore, because it will want to do the reaction, okay, you are gonna be in a very good position for the future. You are gonna be in a very, very, very good position, okay, for what's gonna be next. Okay. Now, methylate exhaustively, meaning methylate until you do get, okay, methylate until you do get the, just move, until you end up getting your final product, okay? So your quaternary result, you have to methylate first. And methylation, normally we use methyl iodide. 
and then we use a base and water to make this reaction proceed easily. Once you methylate, okay, once you methylate, then you react with a base, and the best base for this reaction is actually silver oxide in water, okay? And this would then be able to proceed with the reaction spectacularly. The reason why we use silver salts, okay, is because silver will then complex with the amine, taking it out of contention, taking it out of solution, okay? So then the reaction can even shift even more forward. Remember, these reactions aren't the most feasible spontaneous reactions, okay? They are useful, but they're not the most feasible reactions, okay? So in order to be able to do this reaction properly, okay? In order to be able to do this reaction properly, what you would want to do, okay? What you would want to do is to ensure that you shift the equilibrium. To shift the equilibrium, you use the silver salt, so the equilibrium is immediately shifted towards the right. The equilibrium will remove, I uh, will want to make more amine because this is reacting with the silver salt. Okay, remember, even when we were, when we, when you used to do um, analysis at A level, we used to use silver nitric acid because sometimes with ammonia, you would dissolve the silver chloride that you would have formed, okay? Um, so it's something similar here. It would end up becoming soluble in your system. You would end, it would end up becoming soluble in your system. Now, once this happens, then we can use reactions. You can do reactions like the one that we have here. So. I think those of you who are, who are in chemistry, okay? Um, those of you who are in chemistry with materials or chemistry alone, you might have a module of synthetic chemistry next year and you'll be able to go from that reaction to there. But here, this is a very important aspect, okay? You first methylate. So if we look at the one before, you need to put here the result. So this still need methylation. You methylate, you add the silver salt, you heat, so for the reaction to proceed forward. And once you do that, you can literally, okay? You can literally end up in a situation where you can do this reaction without any problems whatsoever. And in my opinion, this reaction, you can produce whichever alkene you would want. You can produce whichever alkene you would want. Okay? So I would say that if you have, if you want to make an alkene, this is a very good reaction. Now, of course, you do need to make the amine first. And the amines are not, amines are not the easiest chemicals to produce normally. Okay? So I would like to note that and say that immediately. Amines are not normally the easiest compounds to produce, okay? But once produced, once produced, you can truly see how they would work. Okay, once produced, you can make this, uh, we can make the reverse reaction, you can make the diterminal alkene easily. So step one, alkylate. Step two, react with the base in the presence of some heat, and you would be able to get your reaction properly, okay?
So it's something that I would highly, highly recommend that you try it out. Okay. Second one is the manic reaction. So the manic reaction is a very, very useful reaction. Okay. The manic reaction is one of those reactions where any chemist should know. Okay. Any chemist should know. Now I'm not saying this because I believe it's important. I'm saying this because this is one of those basic reactions where you will be using them in a lab if you need them in the future, okay? And this is a two-step reaction. You first react an aldehyde with an amine, and then you react the amine produced, okay, with a ketone. Normally, it is an aldehyde and the name mean to react with a ketone. Now, there is also a possibility. There is also a possibility that you might end up using something different. Okay? That you might end up using something different. If that is the case, it's not a problem. Okay, if it is the case, it's not a problem. It's just that in my opinion, in my opinion, you should, theoretically speaking, try to have a ketone and an aldehyde. If you have two aldehydes, use methanol. Methanol is the most reactive aldehyde that you've got. Why? Because methanol is the only one where the carbon is not stabilized a little bit. So let me explain what I mean by that. So normally you have delta plus and delta minus because of the electronegativity difference. So methanol has two hydrogens. Ethanol would have a methyl group. The methyl group would shift the electrons towards the carbon. And by shifting the electrons towards the carbon, what actually happens is that the reaction, okay, the reaction would end up being slowed down because the electronegativity difference is not that big. Because the electronegativity difference is not that big. Okay? So it's something that you really should be considering. Okay? It's something that you should really be considering. So what happens? First, you form the aminium ion. Now, for the aminium ion, you don't need a quaternary result. Any amine should do. Okay? Any amine should do. Okay? That's step one. Step two is enolization. Step two is enolization. Okay, so step one is going to be, step one is going to be the aminium ion formed, and step two is enolization. Now, step three is the reaction of the enolate with the aminium ion. So remember here, in this one, okay, because you can't see me pointing, in this one, it's very important to note that this is normally done with an acid or a base. But what this officially means, what this ends up being is equivalent to something like this. Let's, let's remove it and draw it all over again. What this ends up being is a structure like that. Okay, where you would have some charge separation. 
I would never want to draw it like this. Remember, first year, we, you would have spoken a little bit about um, resonance forms. That's not the major resonance form. But that is a very interesting perspective when it comes to resonance forms. Okay, that is a very interesting perspective when it comes to resonance forms. And therefore, because of that, I would normally tell you never or try to never be in a position where you need to draw this structure in an exam. Never draw this and draw the mechanism as it is drawn here. Okay, but note that is equivalent to a negative charge on the alpha carbon. This, this structure here is equivalent to a negative charge on the alpha carbon. Okay, so I would say keep it in mind. I would say, keep it in mind. Okay. Now, once you form that negative charge, then it can, can, it can attack the immune mine to join, to make a new carbon-carbon bond. Okay to make a new carbon-carbon bond. On the, on the carbon, alpha carbon and the carbon next to the nitrogen. Okay, so this would be something that is very, very important. Now, now, when speaking about this, okay, this is simply like the aldol reaction. If you do the aldol reaction, it's exactly the same. But the aldol reaction, you don't need to prepare it to prepare this via step one and step two via the amine mean. Now, this in fact, okay, what you are actually adding is this group over here. The product, this or that, can be hydrolyzed to give the C double bond O. It can be hydrolyzed to give the aldehyde, okay, or the alcohol if you want. But what you've got there, what you've got, and I think this is something very important and useful for you is a situation where yes you can easily and i mean easily end up in a situation where you can prepare a carbon carbon bond now please remember even up to a level we used to make the argument but carbon carbon bonds are difficult to create that is not true that is simply not true, okay? Carbon-carbon bonds are bonds that are normally simple to make, okay? They're not the easiest, so when you compare them with some other type of reactions, it's all gonna be the simplest reaction, but this is something that is very useful. In fact, the aminium, okay? This is an organic catalyst. In reality, you can generate the quaternary result once more. Normally, it doesn't happen. Normally, the, you, the salt, the amine is cheap. Therefore, you don't really care that much about it. Okay? But you can easily make it. And once you make it, then you can use it over and over and over again. Okay? But I would highly recommend highly, highly recommend that in your situation, 
keep this in mind as if this is the Albert reaction. Okay, this is the same as the Albert reaction. So in fact, the first two reactions that we've done, that we've covered, are very, very similar to the oxygen analogues. The first one, which was the Hoffman elimination, was similar to the dehydration of alcohols. And this one is similar to the aldol reaction. The Monique reaction is similar to the aldol reaction. The last reaction we're going to be doing for today, Anzi, any questions first? So let's, this is a bit different, okay? So do you have any questions with respect to the first two reactions? When you said the one was an organic catalyst, which one were you referring to? Because I didn't catch it. So this reaction, the whole reaction, uses the, the amine as, organic catalyst, as an organic catalyst. Okay. The whole reaction, okay? In fact, normally we use the reaction to make not the quaternary result or the amine, normally you go back to making the aldehyde, okay? You can hydrolyze, you can break this bond and make the aldehyde, okay? At least when I have done it in the past, that's how I, I have used it. Now, in reality, um, you can do other, other reactions, okay? You can keep it up to, at the amine, but I would say that this is, this makes the reaction go faster. This makes the reaction happen a lot faster than with aldehydes. Okay, of course, there's, okay. Bigger, there's, there's a bigger positive charge here. So reaction with citrus acid. So any other questions? Uh, you said that uh, the the amine is the catalyst, the yes. organic catalyst, um, but it's not the formed at the end. That's what I told you. You can reform it. So this reaction here, it stopped at joining the carbon-carbon bond. You can hydrolyze it. Even if you were hydrolyzing it, this reaction normally, you would still need a high load of the catalyst. Normally, high by high load, what we mean is a reaction where you are using, um, let's see, where you would be using, for example, 20% catalyst. Okay, whereas normally in a normal reaction, you would use 1%, 2%, even the 20%. Sometimes you do it one to one. You can get the catalyst back, it's just not worth it. Okay, and again, in my opinion, if something is not worth it, don't do it. Edit, you know it, should, it could be catalytic, but consider it as a reaction where the amine is one of the reagents. Emma, you should know that it's possible for it to be catalytic. Okay? You would change, you would need to change and you would need to work and change the conditions until you find the right amounts and the right catalysts. Okay, because not all the quaternary results then would give you the products that you would desire, but you could. Other questions? So, reaction with nitrous acid, okay? Now, nitrous acid is NO2 minus, okay, or HNO2, and it is this structure, but it has two resonance forms. So again, once, well, not itself. Once it loses water, the NO, it has two resonance forms. Okay. In fact, it forms NO plus. Can anyone tell me which of these resonance forms is going to be the major or minor product? So we're speaking about these two ones here. Not, a, not majorly important for this part, okay? So it's not a big deal, but can anyone tell me which one should be the major product? The second one. Why? Because it has four octets. It has four octets. The first one, it is electronegativity is very important, okay? So oxygen would be happy, but the reality is that the second one has two four octets, 
and two full octets always wins. Okay, two full octets always win. Um, even though in the second one, the positive charge is on the oxygen. The octets are more important. Okay, having full octets is more important than anything, anything else. Therefore, this one would be the major one. So always, the first thing that you should always check is, does it have a full octet? Yes or no? I don't think there is in the resonance form, or I can think of, where there is not at least one octet. Okay, there should always be at least one octet. If for some reason you can't find any, then redraw what you're doing, because probably you made a mistake. So, the nitrosyl cation is very similar. It's very similar to carbon monoxide, but it is more electrophilic. Okay, it's more electrophilic because, as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't have the negative charge to counteract, okay, to counteract the positive charge of the oxygen. Therefore, it ends up being a lot more, a lot less stable, less stable, more electrophilic. Okay, so what happens? Because it is an electrophile, and electrophiles tend to be good Lewis acids. It can reach with a Lewis base, such as an amine, and forms this compound here. Okay, so what you'll get is you'll get that reaction transferring the negative charge onto this nitrogen. Okay. Then you can lose a proton to form a nitroso dimethyl amine. So this is the nitroso group. Okay. And it is a substituent on the dimethyl amine. This is something that might be interesting and relevant for you. Okay, that nitrosome amines are implicated in the carcinogenity of cured meats. So in secondary, it stops there. And I believe the primary, yes. In secondary, it stops at the nitro to dimethylamine, whereas in a tertiary, it stops at this stage. You can't lose a proton because you do not have a proton. Okay? You can't lose a proton because you do not have a proton. And that is something that is very important. Okay? So here, the reaction, the way they start, you always form the nitrosyl cation, and you always attack through a Lewis base as a, as a reaction. Okay, and once that happens, and once that happens, then you can see whether you have primary, secondary, or tertiary. Secondary, you lose a proton and form a nitrosodimethylamine or a nitrosodialkylamine. Tertiary, you form the carb, the nitrogen, the quaternary result the nitroso water in the result, and in primary, you have the full decomposition, okay? In primary, you have the full decomposition. And this is what you normally do as the azonium salts but you, when you had your A level. So this is the rearrangement of the diazo hydroxide, okay? So the first thing you need to think about is protonated. If you have an oxygen, always protonated. If you're unsure about what to do, always protonate. Note that all the reactions are at equilibrium, apart from the last one. Okay, so at the point where you have the equilibrium, you can always 
go back. At the point where you have the equilibrium, you can always go back. Okay, and I'm emphasizing this because it is, I think, very, very important as in this situation, as in this situation, you should always note that it's, a situ uh, oh, it's an equilibrium. So you should always be thinking about how to move the equilibrium forward. Normally, it's a very simple system on how to move the equilibrium forward. But sometimes it might not be completely possible. Okay, sometimes you might need some extra help, some extra information. In this case, it will decompose and give off nitrogen. Once it gives off nitrogen, then the reaction cannot be reversed. So let's speak about the mechanism. Apologies, just want to remove those. So first, add a proton. Once you add the proton, then you can transfer the electrons from the lone pair of the nitrogen to compensate for the positive charge on the oxygen. Now, these two are resonance forms. And they are resonance forms because you have not changed any bonds, okay? Or you have not changed the adjacency of any atoms. Now, once you form the ammonium salt, okay, once you form the amine salt, okay, then you can lose a proton to form the nitrogen double bond nitrogen without any charges. So at this point, the diazo hydroxide is very useful, okay? Because this is a precursor to form the diazonium salt. Now, these two are tautomers, okay? So if you remember what tautomer, if you don't remember what tautomers are, you normally used to do them between Enones, sorry, enones, okay, and ketones. And here you have something very similar. And here you have something very similar, okay? You don't have an enol because the reality is that the structure here, okay, is a little bit more complex than a normal enol. But consider this, but consider this to be something that is normally useful, okay, that is normally useful for chemistry, okay? Normally, this is something where I would recall, I would ask students to recall before at university, I would ask you to draw it, okay? And then I go around and see if I can find any differences, find any problems, but here it's impossible, okay? But if you are unsure about what automerization is, then do ask. If you are unsure about what automerization is, then please do ask. Okay, now, once you form the diazo, diazo hydroxide, you can then protonate it once more. But this protonation now becomes very valuable, very important, because this protonation now creates an OH2 plus. So this protonation now ends up in a situation where you can, in reality, start considering losing the water. 
Next step will of course be losing the water to form the diazonium cation. Once that is formed, it's unstable and it will decompose and it will decompose, okay? To form, it will decompose to form nitrogen and the carbocation, which can then be used to do whatever your heart desires normally, okay? But it's important, or at least you should see that this is important because in this situation, you would end up, okay, with different products for primary amines, secondary amines, and tertiary amines. And I'm not entirely sure how much you would have considered these differences previously, okay? But you should consider these as being very important differences because these differences, okay, the way they react is going to be a product of the amount of protons in the compound, okay? I'm saying I'm not too sure how many you would have done because, of course, these reactions are going to be dependent on whether you can form this compound, this compound, or this one, okay? And they are all different. Here you have, so let's actually remove the lines so that I can explain it a little bit further. <clears throat> so okay, that I can explain it a little bit further. Here you have this one. This one. And here you have the salt. So in the second dream mean, you can protonate the oxygen, but once you protonate the oxygen, you cannot then deprotonate to form the diazohydroxide. This step would not be possible. That step would not be possible. Okay? So that's why I'm telling you, you need to keep it in mind. Now, any questions on what we've done today? I was just looking at the first step and how come oxygen is protonated and not nitrogen? Because I was thinking that if it's more electronegative, it kind of would be less willing to give its electrons, the oxygen atom. No, and I'm no. stuck. <laughs> um, you're saying, why is this protonated and not that one? Or the other nitrogen, yes, in the middle. Or any, why, why is that protonated, not the others? Okay, mm -hmm. here, over these two, right? Mm -hmm. Now, protonate it. Try it. And the reaction would stop there. So it will just be reversible. Okay. Okay, so, with regards to nucleophilicity, okay, how nucleophilic it's gonna be, okay? You'd see that you can protonate it, but the reaction cannot continue. Apart from this, that double bond, mm -hmm. okay? A very minor form of it is going to be giving the electrons to the oxygen. Okay. Okay? It's a very minor form though. So it's not all anti, it's not what how you, how you would come in and find it. But once that happens, okay, when that is available, then you have to consider that it's immediately gonna be taking the H plus. Now, instead of considering it as we've done with the electrophilic additions, okay? Instead of considering it as the reaction, what could happen, consider the product of protonation, okay? If you protonate the oxygen, you can easily, you can easily end up in a situation where you can have the 
oxygen being stabilized by moving electrons from the lone pair of the hydrogen, uh, of the nitrogen. Ben, what's happening here? Yes. On a, high, on a nitrogen, that would not be possible. So it's a situation you have to try and think, what would happen if I do something different? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. You'd always start asking now, what would happen if I do something different? Because if you can start thinking in from that perspective with that mindset, you should be able to, maybe not always, but you should be able to actually start taking a look and say, okay, this is what's happening. Okay. Maybe again, not always, maybe it's not a situation where you will always be able to analyze what's happening step by step. But whatever nitrogen you're gonna have, it's gonna be protonated, right? But there's no way that you're gonna be able to aid that protonation, to stabilize that protonation, separate to get the positive charge being produced. Okay. And get the product you are speaking of, okay? Get a stable compound. It's just not possible, okay? I don't know if I've answered your question, Emily. I think it's okay. I kind of understood it. Okay, the power of within the electrophilic addition, where what we were doing constantly was see the positions and once you add under the different positions then you can start considering the stabilization so again here i would that's one let's try and because you're thinking about electrophilic and nucleophilic properties with mm -hmm. regards to what you know about nitrogen and oxygen right but if you were to have this even kind of the R group would make the night the lone pairs on the nitrogen more, you know, available because of the positive inductive mm -hmm. effect. But if you have that, okay, mm -hmm. then how are you gonna stabilize it? Moving lone pairs from the nitrogen to the bonds. <laughs> Let's say you do that. Okay. Let's say you do that. And you should, in theory, then kick off the hydrogen. Yeah. That's not going to be very stable. Mm -hmm. So you'll end up having a positive charge and a negative charge on those two nitrogens, which is not a stable conformation. OK, so even okay. if it happens, it kind of is breaks apart by itself. And the only one that succeeds yeah. is the oxygen. Exactly. Now, it won't happen, because this is all about energies. Okay, the energy to protonate one of the nitrogens is much higher than the energy to protonate one of the, uh, to protonate the oxygen. Okay, so we're always gonna be keeping that in mind. Um, but yes, you're right. Okay, um, good, good question. These are the questions that will make you better chemists eventually. Yes, you might not get them right, but think about the whys. And that's what you did here, right here. You told me, but why is this not happening? Okay. And that is what was going to get you to be good chemists when you go out of university. Think about the questions. The exam, all of you will pass. I would be very surprised if one of you doesn't pass. Okay. But think about what's happening. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording.